The time is 10 a.m. and this is WKYT Midmorning. Baton Rouge is in mourning again and trying to make sense of another attack on police. Police here in Central Kentucky take to social media to share their support and concern. And the focus of campaign 2016 is on the city of Cleveland today and the Republican National Convention. This is WKYT Midmorning. Good morning to you and welcome in to WKYT Midmorning. Hope you had a good weekend. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Barbara Bailey. Had a very humid it weekend. Was you could feel it, but pretty. <laughs> it, it was. It was nice. Uh, it is still humid out there, and it sounds like the temperature uh, goes even higher as we get through this week. It's summertime, Micah. Yeah, and you're finally feeling it. I mean, we really haven't had that bad of a summer, that bad of a July. When July is typically our hottest month, we haven't really felt it. And we will this week. I promise you that. We're looking outside. If you're seeing ominous clouds, dark clouds racing across that 64 corridor just south of that, all it is is showers. It's really falling apart. That's some good news for us. So basically just some light showers, moderate showers, central and northern zones right now. But look back towards Champaign, Illinois. You see that little complex right there? It doesn't look overly impressive now, but that's where we're going to be watching sliding into our region later on this afternoon. I'm going to break down the timing on that coming up. We'll see you shortly. In the news this morning, authorities in Louisiana are trying to figure out what motivated Sunday's deadly ambush on police officers in Baton Rouge. Investigators say Gavin Long, a decorated ex-Marine, acted alone when he exchanged gunfire with officers at a gas station, killing three officers and injuring three others. Long was shot and killed at the scene. Don Champion has the latest from Baton Rouge. Mourners in Baton Rouge came together Sunday, hours after the ambush killings of three of the city's finest, including 32-year-old Montrell Jackson, a veteran officer who leaves behind a wife and infant son. My heart is broken and torn, but I believe that God is still a heal healer in the midst of what we're going through. Jackson, along with officers Matthew Gerald and Brad Garifola, were shot and killed Sunday by Gavin Long. The ex-Marine from Kansas City opened fire on the officers who were responding to reports of a man dressed in all black with a gun. This 911 call captures one of the officers' desperate pleas for help. I'm hit. I'm uh, in front of the, on the side of the old Floyd Brown. About to call on you. As part of their investigation, authorities are examining the gunman's social media activity for clues into the attack. You gotta fight back. That's the only way a bully knows to quit. Just a week ago, the gunman posted this video under an online alias on YouTube, railing about police violence against African Americans. If we come together as a family peacefully and talk it out, we can fix our problems. From the White House Sunday, President Obama said an attack on the police is an attack on all of us. Don Champion, CBS News, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. 41-year-old Nicholas Tullier, an 18-year veteran, is in critical condition. 51-year-old Bruce Simmons, a 23-year veteran, is being treated for non-life-threatening injuries. Now, here in the Bluegrass, departments throughout the state took to social media to show their support and remember their fellow officers. In a Facebook post, the Lexington Police Department called the shooting deeply heartbreaking. It posted the message, this job isn't easy, but it's the career we chose because we care deeply about serving and protecting this city and its people. In Franklin County, the Sheriff's Department is asking people to remember the families of officers who died, posting a Bible passage which includes, blessed are the peacemakers. Our country right now is in a, in a very, very uh, ugly spot, and, and I never thought I'd see the day that, that it would come to it that, that police officers and, and sheriff's deputies are being targeted. Kentucky officials also weighed in on the shooting in Baton Rouge. Senate Majority Leader and Kentucky U.S. Senator Mitch McConnell released a statement saying, This unjustifiable attack is not just an attack on law enforcement. It is an attack on the very principles that bind us as a nation. And Governor Matt Bevan tweeted, Let us all stand united in condemning the evil that is being unleashed on those who are protecting us. If you want to read Senator McConnell or Governor Bevan's full statements, you can find both of those right now on WKYT.com. Well, the trial is underway in a high-profile Lexington murder case. Matthew Donahue is accused of killing his boyfriend, 
Todd Schumacher at a home on Lamont Drive in January of last year. Donahue is also accused of putting the victim's dog in a hot oven. Earlier this month, Donahue's lawyers asked a judge to exclude some evidence from his trial case. Defense attorneys say their client was under the influence of a, quote, fistful of sleeping pills, and the police coerced his confession. The judge denied their request to limit the evidence. An Anderson County family was forced out of their home after an overnight fire. The fire started about midnight on Sea Ridge Road near Bluegrass Parkway. Authorities say the fire completely engulfed the home. Nobody was injured, but crews say it's a total loss. The cause of the fire is still under investigation this morning. Authorities in Georgia are working to determine what caused a boat to flip, killing four Kentuckians. Divers on Lake Lanier found the bodies of Anthony Reese Jr. and Arthur McMahon yesterday morning. Their wives, Tammy Reese and Melissa McMahon, were found on Saturday. The two couples were at the lake for a charity polka run when the accident happened. The Reeses were from Adair County, and the McMahons were from Bullitt County. Their children have released a statement saying our parents meant the world to us. We never realized how much impact they had on people's lives. The statement goes on to say that they were one of a kind and will truly be missed. And again, thank you for your continued prayers. Well, an American student is confirmed among the dead in last week's attack in Nice, France. The University of California, Berkeley, is saying in a statement that investigators identified the body of Nicholas Leslie. The 20-year-old was from Del Mar in the San Diego area. The school says three other UC Berkeley students were injured in the attack. All of them suffered broken bones. The Republican National Convention kicks off today in Cleveland amid very tight security in the wake of Baton Rouge and other recent attacks. Now tonight's theme, Make America Safe Again, focuses on how a Donald Trump presidency would help restore law and order. And instead of it being a showbiz convention, as Trump had promised, it's shaping up to be a staid, family-focused affair. The convention lineup features everyday Americans, successful business people, and four of Trump's five children. Campaign manager Paul Manafort says the plan is to, quote, help the American people understand more about Donald Trump, the man, not just the candidate that they've seen on the campaign trail. And at least two Kentucky lawmakers will be in Cleveland for the convention this week. Both U.S. Senator Mitch McConnell and State Senator Ralph Alvarado, Jr. are scheduled to speak. McConnell will speak tomorrow evening, and Alvarado will give his talk on Wednesday. They'll be speaking to the theme, Make America Work Again. And Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton is going to be speaking at the NAACP convention, their national convention in Cincinnati, later today. SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket launched from Cape Canaveral early this morning. The rocket is carrying the Dragon CRS-9 spacecraft with a cargo of supplies for the International Space Station. The CRS-9 is also carrying an international docking adapter. This is the second attempt to launch the critical space station docking port. The last one went up in smoke over the Atlantic last year. NASA needs this new docking set up at the International Space Station before Americans can fly there in crew capsules next year. Always impressive, those nighttime launches. Well, Phil Mickelson was terrific at the British Open, tying a major tournament record with a 63 and closing with a 65 to finish a 17-under at Royal Troon. It wasn't enough, though. Sweden's Henrik Stenson uh, claimed his first major championship by outlasting Mickelson in the final round. Stenson tied a major record with a 63 that included 10 birdies and two bogeys. Kentucky native J.B. Holmes finished third overall, the former Wildcat with the best finish in a major tournament of his career. So big congratulations to all the winners. That's right. We'll keep it right here this mid-morning. Coming up, some special fun for kids of soldiers who've been deployed overseas. The force just might be with them. And we'll check in at the box office where we might be seeing more animation domination. We have some showers heading our direction. This first batch is actually falling apart. And then we look back toward the north and the northwest. Here comes another batch. It's going to be heading through here later on this afternoon. I'm going to get into the timing on that coming up next. Now, your zone-by-zone zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. 
We have a few showers racing southbound. Not really uh, driving any of us crazy with this rain because it's more of just showers than any thunderstorms. So we're not really worried about this batch because this batch is kind of falling apart. But you see it across that I-64 corridor, the front edge of this. And what's happening here is this is shooting out ahead of this. This is going to continue to fall apart. Nothing really to worry about. Could you get a lightning strike out of this? Yes, it's possible. But most of this just showers as it continues to work its way southbound. What we're going to be focusing in on is actually this system back toward our west and northwest. In Illinois, it's going to be a long time before it actually gets here, but it is heading our direction. That's going to have a little kick to it. And watch this on our high resolution model. This will help you plan out the rest of your day. Look at 1, 2 p.m. Most of that's faded away. That first batch that I was talking about to not really worry about. So most of that fades away by roughly, I would say, noon to about 2 p.m. And then watch back toward the northwest. Here we go. Driving into the afternoon, it's 3, 4 p.m. Not much going on. But you get into that 5, 6, 7, 8 p.m. time. And it gets a little rainy and it gets a little stormy too. And this could be the strong thunderstorms I was talking about early this morning. And it all depends on if it sticks together. We'll see. But as of right now, we're leaning more toward yes, it is going to happen anywhere from 5 to 8 p.m. A lot going on later on this evening. If you're heading out to eat, just know this it could be a little rainy, especially as we travel across central and northern zones. Down into the south, it's mainly southeast. Remember, not everybody's seeing rain today. Look at the southwest. Cumberland region. Only a small chance that you actually get a few rumbles of thunder later on today. So that's the breakdown today. Tomorrow, a few storms left over, and then we get off toward Wednesday and Thursday, and we take our attention off of the storms because they're not around. Then we bring our attention on the heat. Watch this. This warm front moves north of us. There's 5 p.m. Thursday. Look at all the warm air sneaking on in here from the south. This is not your feels like temperature. This is your actual temperature that we're going to be feeling as we head towards your Thursday, Friday, and off into your weekend. We're talking mid-90s across the region in most locations. It's going to be very steamy. Humidity will be up, so it's just not going to feel good as we slide off into your Thursday, Friday, Saturday time. And you can see a lot of us will be dealing with that heat, guys. So expect some stormy conditions the next couple of days, and then the heat really takes over. Once we drop off into the late work week, off into the oh, weekend. Oh, boy. It's one or another. Be we'll deal with it. Yeah, right. We know you can deal with it. You're originally from Alabama. There you right? go. So yeah. Absolutely. You'll be all right. Yeah, but we're not. <laughs> You're right. So, okay. Right. I'll work with you guys. <laughs> Thanks, We Martha. got you. Thank well, you. Kids of deployed soldiers got to take on the dark side and try their hands at Star Wars. They had a good time. The event was a day of play to remind some Utah children that they are not alone, even though their parents might be overseas. The kids got to play laser. Tag with what appear to be real life stormtroopers, Darth Vader, and more. And those who went say it's these little get togethers that lift everybody up and remind military families that they do have the support of the community. So it's a good thing to do. And see. Absolutely, it is. Well, every overworked mother's fantasy comes to the big screen, and the newest Ghostbusters movie comes up short at the weekend box office. Brian Webb has your eye on entertainment. The secret life of pets scared away the ghost at the box office. The animated film stayed on top, raking in $50.6 million in ticket sales. Ghostbusters, the all-female reboot of the 1980s blockbuster, made $46 million in its debut. Three overextended, overstressed moms run away from their husbands, kids, and their seemingly perfect peers in the female road trip film Bad Moms. Kristen Bell says going on a wild, unmom like binge is every mother's fantasy. It's a realistic, comedic portrayal of what I think every woman who has had a kid has gone through. Mila Kunis and Katherine Hahn round out the trio of moms on the run. Bad Moms opens July 29th. A new documentary feeds America's ongoing fascination with the late John F. Kennedy Jr. I am JFK Jr., a tribute to a good man, follows Kennedy's life as a toddler in the White House to his death in a 1999 plane crash at age 38. It features interviews with celebrities and politicians who knew him well. The film comes to select theaters Friday. That's your Eye on Entertainment, Brian Webb for CBS News, New York. Well, coming right up, if you're searching for adventure, then why not join a motorcycle ride along with Kentucky State Police? How it's benefiting Trooper Island next on WKYT. And, and tomorrow's Mega Millions jackpot, $25 million. 
And Wednesday's Powerball jackpot is now at $361 million. Welcome back in. It's mid-morning on WKYT. We're glad you're with us. Hot as it is today on this <laughs> Monday, right. right? Stay inside. Exactly. Uh, or get out with uh, some wind in your face. This is what we're going to talk about. It's your chance this Saturday to jump on your motorcycle and ride along with the Kentucky State Police on a scenic two-hour journey. And best of all, it benefits a great cause, Trooper Island. To learn more about it, we're joined by Trooper Robert Purdy. Thank you very much for coming in today. Thank you. Yeah, before we talk about uh, the, what is going on with the big event Saturday, let's talk a little bit about Trooper Island. You were yeah. telling us it, uh, it goes on all summer long and a lot of kids enjoy it. Yeah, eight weeks out of the year, uh, two posts uh, join forces and take about 70 children down, ages 10 to 12, and just spend a week with them. Uh, I was there last week and had a great time uh, on the island, uh, just just investing in their lives and, and getting to see them change from from the day they show up on Monday uh, to the time that they leave Friday. And you do see a big change, don't you? You really do. They, they grow and they do things that they they wouldn't have had the opportunity to do otherwise. Uh, you can see a lot of maturity come out and just the the interaction between us and them. Uh, it, it's night and day. And, and who wouldn't love it? You know, swimming, <laughs> canoeing, right, right, fishing. Who wouldn't? Yeah. Uh, with some uh, good guidance uh, by, by the troopers who are there. Yeah. yeah. Tell us about this event coming up uh, on Saturday, uh, calling all motorcycle riders, right? Yeah. Trooper Island, it's a free camp. So throughout the year, we do different fundraisers. And, and right now, we have a motorcycle ride on Saturday uh, at 1130 a.m. that starts at Kentucky Motorsports and Outdoors in Richmond. Uh, it's going to be about a two-hour motorcycle ride. Uh, we're going to serve lunch to, to registrants. Uh, we have a, a raffle ticket uh, with each paid registration. Uh, they get a raffle ticket on a 2016 Dodge truck that we're giving away. But it just really is a, a neat time to come together, uh, have a great time, and benefit a great cause. And there's also a family fun day surrounding that as well. There is. Yeah, we're going to have uh, bounce houses. Uh, after the motorcycle ride, there's actually a car show and a lot of other things going on. So, you know, bring the family. Come out. Uh, we're going to have T-shirts for sale, and in a lot of ways, just to hopefully give back to the community yeah. and, and help Trooper Island. Uh, Trooper, uh, as you mentioned, connecting with the community and connecting law enforcement. This is a difficult time uh, for for law enforcement, and yet uh, I'm sure you do feel the support of many people out there who are uh, who, who are, want you to know that they support law enforcement. Uh, you know we do. Uh, this past week, I, I've had a lot of people, you know, stop us and yeah. and, and let us know how much they appreciate us, um, and it, that that means a lot. Uh, but you know, that's not the reason we do our job. We do it to hopefully make a difference, uh, change the community, and and, and and obviously Trooper Island uh, backs that up, and we just get to invest in somebody's life for just a little while. Certainly underscores the importance of this right. that connection with the community. Thank you very much. Thank Good you. luck with the event. Thanks. All right. And we hope you'll keep it here on WKYT and Mid Morning. We're going to be checking in with the Mr. Food Test Kitchen next. Coming up, it's WKYT News at noon. We'll have the very latest from Baton Rouge, the site of the latest attack on police. We'll get an update on a trial that's underway here in Lexington. A man accused of killing his boyfriend. And the city of Cleveland makes ready for the Republican National Convention. News, weather, and sports ahead at noon on WKYT. Well, from the Mr. Food Test Kitchen today, a low-carb side dish is loaded with lots of great flavors. And good colors, too, it looks like. It's a cauliflower fried rice recipe, even a healthier alternative to your favorite takeout style, fried rice. As we get deeper and deeper into summer and swimsuit season, we're all searching for ways to look and feel our best. And for many of us, that means cutting down on carbs. If that sounds good to you, then you'll love what we're making today. We're turning cauliflower into what looks and tastes like rice without all the carbs or the guilt. So let me show you how to make a skinny version of fried rice. We start by cutting a head of cauliflower into florets and placing them in a food processor. Now we pulse it a few times until the cauliflower almost looks like rice. Then we stir fry it along with some mixed veggies, soy sauce, a handful of spices, and a little sesame oil. You see, as it cooks and all the flavors blend together, we end up with what looks and tastes like our favorite fried rice, but without all the carbs and calories. See, I told you it was pretty versatile. So if you want to be up to date with what's trending, go online right now and get the recipe for what we call 
cauliflower fried rice, along with our priceless collection of other recipes where we turn cauliflower into all sorts of fun stuff, even flatbread. These are just a few of the many good for you recipes from our everydaydiabeticrecipes.com website. I'm Howard from the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a lighter way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Looks good. I would like that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, here's what does not look good. You look outside, you see those ominous clouds rolling towards you. But just remember this. This batch is falling apart. I will say this. You look across 64 corridor, and you'll see still, uh, still some heavy downpours, Winchester, and then work your way back toward Mount Sterling. You could get a couple of rumbles of thunder out of that. So heads up Mountain Parkway. It's heading your direction. But remember, the farther this goes down toward the south, more in likelihood it just falls apart. We're going to be watching later on this afternoon is that stuff coming out of Illinois. That's going to head our direction. Expect that to roll through the region anywhere from about 4 to about 8 p.m. later. On this afternoon. Okay, so a couple of rounds of this, huh? That's right. All right. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us for WKYT Mid Morning. We hope you're right here at noon. The Bold of the Beautiful is next here on CBS. We'll see you back here at noon.